Hello everyone, and welcome to uh, Let's Ink Terex the Tamer Part 3. Uh, I'm Anthony with Inkwise Studios, and in this episode, uh, I will be continuing to spot blacks on this figure. Um, in the last two episodes, uh, I was just working on spotting blacks and adding in some feathers here and there, so uh, just going to continue to do that and maybe go over some details, and uh, we'll kind of go from there. So. All right, so let me get some ink on my brush real quick. And you may have noticed that there may there's a few changes in this episode. You know, number one, it's like a different camera angle, so yay. Uh, so you can actually see the strokes that I'm doing. My hand won't get in the way so much. Um, what I had to do was I had to like change my camera position, and like with the way my my drawing table is set up, and get some more ink on my brush. With the way my drawing table is set up, uh, I have like my computer on my right side and my uh, drawing table portion on the left. So uh, basically, um, you know, it was just easier because, you know, my, like the USB cable for the camera, you know, it's kind of short. So it's like it was easier for me to mount the camera on my right side because. Um, Basically, I, uh, you know, I kind of had this kind of jerry rig together. I like taped the webcam to my uh, lamp on my drawing desk. So, but that wasn't working. So, because you know, my hand kept blocking the uh, the strokes I was making. So you couldn't exactly see what I was I was doing. It was kind of bad. So, fix that. Um, also, you may notice that that annoying mini cam logo is gone uh, because I'm using a different video editing program. I won't tell you which one because I like to be sneaky like that. But either way, um, just fix that so hopefully going forward I will be using this better program and it will work well for me. At least I'm hoping so. Uh, it seems to work so far so I just couldn't wait to get home from work so I could try it out and you know do some different things with this video because I'm, I'm really excited to produce these videos um, they're fun to do I will say I, I've only done two I've only completed two and this is my third one and I've had a lot of fun with it so I think I'm gonna keep doing it uh, it definitely helps me out the only weird thing is it's like you know I know you can't see my face but it's like the camera's like almost right next to my face so it's kinda weird to ink this way but either way it's fine so I'm just working on his uh, his loincloth area and we're spotting the black here now, as you may notice I don't I mean you may not notice or you may not care I mean some people don't care but I care of course I care because I'm doing it but um, you may notice that I don't really use French curves for like these sections where you would usually use French curves. There is a reason for that, and I, amongst my friend circles, I've, I've actually become infamous for that. So it's not a, exactly a good thing that I'm known for not using French curves. Uh, basically, I don't like using them, I think they're kind of awkward to use there's a lot of things that I don't use because I feel awkward but it's like a standard tool but French curves is just like that one thing that I really feel awkward about using and that that's not to say I don't use them at all I do on sections where I absolutely have to like if I'm inking like an airplane or something like that you know I can't get around that but uh, like on things like this I will I've I'm trying as much as I can to train my hand to just freehand uh, like those long curves and then if, if if the line weight or if the the line consistency is not even then I'll just like touch it up like this just so it can be straight I want it to be straight as possible but you know uh, that's just my thing it's you know and you know in the last two videos I did talk about like 
efficiency and making sure that you know you streamline your process as much as possible to make sure that you know you're producing the most quality work within the shortest amount of time and I know that's one thing that I do that's not very efficient but uh, that's like my hang up you know please don't make that your hang up you know you work however is the most comfortable for you however you can get great lines is what is what matters um, I remember reading the uh, book by Scott McCloud who's a fantastic author um, there's a book called making comics I know a lot of you if you if you are interested in making comics you've probably either heard of or read or own that book uh, you know I keep it by my drawing desk because it's, it's very handy when I need some inspiration <laughs> And he said, you know, uh, it doesn't matter what you what tool you use to get great lines. You know, what matters is the outcome. You know, and I heard somebody say, you know, you can you can use a, a, a Snickers bar dipped in ink. And as long as it gives you those good lines, nobody will fault you for using a Snickers bar. Although they may look at you funny. So. So. Not exactly a Snickers bar inker, but you know, I try to do the best that I can with the tools that I have. So, just hitting some of these contour areas. So, it's a black area right here. So, yeah, um, I was saying that I've become infamous for not using French curves. How that came about was kind of a convoluted. Uh, situation uh, some of the details I actually cannot tell you about um, I, don't, I don't know that it sounds like it's just ultra shady but I mean it's it's not shady it's just really I can't I can't reveal too many details because it, it kind of breaks like a confidentiality you know commitment I had with another person so I won't tell you all the details but I'll give you the main gist of the story uh, long story short um, I was actually able to get in touch with a uh, professional working inker um, and after having dialogue with him for a few months I was able to he had, he had asked me, it was kind of like a rush thing, to fill in for him on a page on a book that he was working on. Now, I won't say what book it was. Um, I won't say who the inker was because, you know, that'll be giving way too much away. I think the most I can say, and this may even be saying too much, but the most I can say was it was a book for DC. Um, so, I did actually fill in I know I said I, I haven't worked for like the big the big comic book company so I'm not a professional in that regard in like my previous video well uh, you know that's still mostly true I haven't worked for them in an official capacity but I did fill in so there's that but um basically I was able to fill in on one page uh, on a DC comics book for a uh, current working professional inker. That was a highlight of you know at the time. You know, I really, really uh, enjoyed doing that. And say enjoyed, you know, actually I was rushing a lot because it was a, a very trying time. Like I had like basically ten hours to ink it, and it was on a Sunday, and I had to go to church. Um, but I rushed it. Uh, I rushed it too much. I didn't use French curves on it when uh, the person specifically requ requested for me to use French curves. And uh, I just don't like using them. So a lot of the contour lines in the, uh, in the finished product were like really, really shaky. Like not professional quality at all. Like I did have that page in my portfolio for a while, but you know, after after too long, I just stopped. I stopped. You know, I took it out. I actually threw it away because I I just hated it so much. 
and uh <coughs> sorry sneeze there so uh, I took it out of my portfolio and you know I uh, I was so embarrassed on that page and like I told my friends about it so ever since then they they've always kind of like made jokes about how I don't use French curves you know so I've never been ha been able to live that down. I mean, I don't mind. You know, I don't care. Uh, people make jokes all the time. So it's like, you know, all right, laugh it up. You know, I made a mistake. And, you know, potentially blew like a huge chance. But I'm not too concerned about it. Um, you know, it it happened. It was, it was kind of an ugly situation of how it played out. But it worked out in the end so I know I'm not like blacklisted or anything at least I don't think I am I may be but that's okay uh, I'll find my own way to get in it's fine uh, and you know that's that's not to blame anybody in the situation I'm not mad you know it happens I mean I definitely can't blame anybody because like it was mostly my fault but that's neither here nor there so, because of that experience, you would think that I would start using French curves. You know, my friends are making jokes about it, but I still find that I don't like using them. It's like very, you know, very annoying to use them. And it's like, you would think it's like the basic, one of the basic inker tools. Like if you pick up an instructional book on how to ink comics uh, basically that's like one of the first tools that they show you you know along with like the rulers and stuff so but you know I guess I don't I never learn my lesson but that's okay I try to get by so Speaking of books, like I said, I don't, you know, I said this in previous video, I don't necessarily want these videos to be instructional, but I'm sure they could have some instructional value. So, uh, some of the, you know, I could tell you some things that I recommend if you, if you would like resources or, you know, if I, if I mention something, you know, I can... Uh, name some resources that I would recommend to give more in-depth information about it. Um, I was talking about that book by Scott McCloud, Making Comics, which is very good, and is, is actually his that section of that book um, that talks about tools for making comics is very oriented towards inkers although I think Scott McCloud had like self-publishing comic book artists or, or comic book artists who will be doing all the work for their comics I, th I think that's what he had in mind because that's that's basically what he does so a lot of the, the artists who he contacted to uh, get their opinions on what they use are like that they're like independent you know self-publishing artists you know maybe a few uh, you know big name well not necessarily big name but you know mainstream published artists who had like a de predefined role and wasn't you know necessarily doing everything so but you know yeah that that's a good book uh, it's really it's not necessarily practical application it is a lot of theory and if you read Scott McCloud books that that is his area he's not a comics practical application guy he is a comics theory guy and he basically when you read his stuff it allows you to think about a lot of things differently and, you know think about your approach so it's good for that um, Books that are straight up about inking that I recommend. There are actually, I want to say, four books 
that I uh, I particularly enjoy and that were very helpful to me. Um, two are actually about inking. Two are not necessarily about inking, but had a lot to say about it. Um, the first one, and the biggest one I would recommend, is uh, um, what is it called? Actually, I forgot the name of the book. Wow, that is terrible. Um, what is it called? Um, it's a book by Gary Martin. Um, it's like inking comics. Uh, let me look that up real quick because I'm, I'm I'm terrible with this. I'm sorry. I was supposed to have all that stuff ready, but you know you would you would think I'm I'm doing a video, and you know I'll have all this stuff together, but I'm just kind of doing the, the commentary straight off, straight off my mind while I'm thinking about it. There it is. Sorry. But it was, it's called The Art of Comic Book Inking by Gary Martin. And this is supposed to be my, like, my favorite art book. You know, I can't even think of the name. Isn't that terrible? I'm a terrible person. But that's okay. Either way, um, Gary Martin, like, this book uh, is very comprehensive on the subject of inking. Subject of, like, techniques like uh, feathering and hatching cross hatching and dry brush and going into all these you know myriad techniques that Gary Martin is just so good at and not only that but um, the most I mean that that part of the, the book excuse me is is very useful but one of the most useful parts of that book is uh, where in the back of the book they have different pencil pages and they'll have you know he had different inkers come in on those pages and ink like the same page separately in their own style and they give commentary in the book on what they did on the page and what their tools were so that's super helpful um, so uh, it used to be like when he originally wrote the book it was split into two volumes like the first volume was the uh, the instructional part where, where it told you about you know tools materials techniques feathering hatching all that stuff and then the second volume was the artists who would come in and give the commentary on the pages that they were inking well since then I know like I read on Amazon and people are like looking for the second volume they can't find it well, actually, I think for a while, the two volumes have been printed all together in one volume. So it's, it's one book. So if you're looking for volume two of this book, it's like basically if you if you buy this book on Amazon, which is where I got it, th you know, it's one volume. So that that is the book that you're looking for. Don't know if anybody said that yet on Amazon, but I guess I'll I'll say that now. Uh, there's only one volume to the book just keep that in mind so that is a book I would definitely recommend for for inking and the second book I would recommend is the DC Comics Guide to Inking Comics which is written by Klaus Jansen he also wrote the uh, DC Comics Guide to Penciling Comics which is a little weird because I don't really know him as a penciler but I know he is multi-talented, so I'm not too surprised. Um, that book reads more of kind of like uh, like there there is an instructional component to it, but he doesn't really go into techniques like like Gary Martin does. Like he doesn't have a page where it's like this is how you feather, you know, this is how you crosshatch, this is how you f spot blacks. Like it's not that type of book. It's more so. He shows examples of inked pages that he likes. He goes over them, why he likes them, and it will usually try to conform to uh, the subject of the chapter that he's on. Like, there'll be a chapter on light and shadow, and then he'll pick a bunch of pages from DC Comics history that show good light and shadow, and he explains why he likes them. So... 
in many ways, it's just kind of like a commentary on inking in general. What is good inking? What is not good inking? And it's it's kind of like when you read the book, it's almost like hearing like one of those old pros ramble on about what makes a good page. And it's like, you know, some people may be turned off by that and not really like that at all. But some people may be intrigued because, you know, if you if you listen to professionals in any field really just kind of ramble on about their experiences and what it was like when they started out and when they were working you know there may be some boring parts but then again there are some parts there's some gems in there so you know you just have to listen closely to find them and that's what that book is about um, so that that's kind of how I see that book it, it's helpful in its own regard in, in, in that respect but uh, not really for like straight up practical application it's not really for beginners it's like if you already decided that you want to be an inker and you need some more stuff to think about so there's that the third book I would recommend is uh, is actually a flip book so it's like um, you could read the book from either side and it's a it's a book it's like a two-sided book and it's by Prentice Rollins, who is a great inker and penciler in his own right. Uh, it's it's a graphic novel that he did called The Resonator. It was his own original story. He wrote, penciled, and inked it. And um, on the flip side of the the graphic novel, The Resonator. There's actually a, uh, a uh, you know, a walkthrough of how he produced it. So it's basically like behind the scenes of the resonator, and then he goes into his process of inking, his process of writing the story, his process of penciling the story, all the type of stuff. And that was really helpful in developing my pro my inking process because there was a time where I was trying to figure out the best way to approach inking a page. What what I need to have in mind what materials to use for effects and things like that and his book was super helpful at that time I checked it out at the library and uh, I ended up buying it because it's good to flip through sometimes and the story is not bad either uh, I mean if you're not a fan of like you know high high uh, science fiction stories is you know probably won't appeal to you but the uh the behind the scenes part of the book is really helpful i will say so prentice rollins if you ever watch this video thank you for that book it's kind of obscure too i i i i just happened across it at the library and I picked it up and it turned out to be helpful but I I had never heard of it out of outside of that and I haven't met too many people who have heard of that book either so so yeah all right so still spotting blacks here and the th the I was about to say third the fourth book that I would recommend is uh it's called uh, Pen and Ink, the Manga Startup Guide. And I don't usually read manga books or manga instructional books because I personally, uh, you know, not to not to hate on you guys who like manga, but I am not a manga fan. I'm not necessarily an anime fan anymore. I used to be. I used to, you know, I was like a Dragon Ball Z fan and, you know, still kind of am. Um... I used to watch Outlaw Star and Inuyasha and a few other programs like Gundam Wing and stuff like that. And, you know, I used to like anime, but, you know, I, I kind of tried to go back to my roots and uh, go back to the traditional American comic style. So I kind of left the manga thing alone. But uh, this book is super helpful because... It specifically deals with um, doing comics with a nib. 
So that book really helps me because I suck at it. I still use that book. I'm still reading that book. And it's really helpful. Like, it's definitely orientated towards people who want to produce manga. Um, because the materials that it refers to, like the brands, are, are all Japanese stationery. Um, like, they'll, they'll reference like Pentel, Deleter, Kuretake. Um, and like the, the terminology that they use to refer to certain pens, like certain nibs are different than like what you would be used to as like an American comic book artist. Like um, what you would usually refer to as like a crow quill. Like if you look at a, a Hunt 102, you know, you'll call that a crow quill nib. Well, in Japan, that's known as a mapping nib. And that's not even the preferred nib that they like to use. They like to use um, um, G nibs, which are like these really big fat nibs. Um, you know, if you look at like a cart a cartoon drawing nib, that's that's kind of what it looks like. And I use those kind of. I, I actually got to use those, you know, from reading that book. And it is easier in some aspects to use because it's, it, you know, it has like s s some facsimile of a brush. It's not the same though, and it's like a crow quill will definitely give you more variation. So I'm not 100% sold on using G nibs all the time. But um, the useful thing about that book. Um, well, there's two useful parts. One useful part is they interview, they interview a lot of manga artists specifically. I know they interviewed the guy who did Trigun, and they interviewed like uh, a few other guys, and they go over a bunch of manga artists who give like quick excerpts of you know what they did and what tools that they use and what they like to you know what helps them to create. So that's helpful. And then the second part that's helpful is it's called a four week pen training course. And that is uh, probably the best part of that book because it takes you step by step through, you know, each, you know, building up your skills and using, um, using nibs. And it's like, you know, first one, draw a line. Second one, uh, draw like a zigzag line. Third one, try to draw a spiral. You know, try to draw this, and then it's like each each lesson builds up on each other to where you're inking entire figures, you're inking perfect circles with a nib, you're ink, you know, all that type of stuff. And it's like it builds up your skills, and it's like it's it's orientated towards manga, but any person who uses nibs, even if they're an American comic book artist can can definitely benefit from that so I would highly recommend that book just you know just for the pen training alone but there are other useful parts of that book too so um, those are my four books um, you know the DC Comics Guide to Inking Comics uh, The Art of Comic Book Inking by Gary Martin um, The Resonator uh, The Resonator slash the making of a graphic novel by Prentice Rollins and also pen and ink the manga startup guide so if you're in the market for inking books those are the ones I would recommend and those are probably in my opinion the best ones you can get so I spotted some more blacks on this page as you can see uh, have a little bit more progress and I know these videos kinda go slow I mean like I said I pattern these off of let's play videos so there's actually more going on in the Let's Play video than what would be going on here. But, you know, um, just let me know what you, you know, give me guys, give me some feedback to let me know if you're enjoying it so far, if if uh, there's anything you'd like for me to change or anything you'd like for me to, to do on camera short of, uh, you know, dancing like a chicken or anything like that. So uh, thanks for watching. And uh, if you have any other questions, you know, you can always email me or request my email address and I will try to contact you. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.